I do all the talking for you all. Oh, shoot. Sure. Okay. What's the first thing in trust? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Now, nobody told me to have something. Oh, my God. <clears throat> All right, we're going to start with the rooms for Asia Wilson and Chelsea Gray. Nikias? If I can get my mic to work, there we go. Uh, thank right. you, ladies. Congrats on the win. Um, what makes you two so dynamic as a pick and roll partnership? Got to guard it. <laughs> That's all you got. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things. I mean, when you look at great guards and great posts, the whole thing is you got to figure out how to guard it. And I mean, I'm not trying to be funny, but I'm being <laughs> real. It's one of those things where you got to pick your poison. I mean, you can ask any duo that. It's like, what, what are you going to do? Pick, pick which one? And I think once we mastered that, it's it's like Plato in our hand at that point. It's just making sure that we get the right pass and get the bucket. Oh, all right, sticking with the Zooms, Jeff Brown. Yeah, Chelsea, uh, you know, just talk to me about not just the scoring, but the defense, the the tie-ups, the jump balls. It, it just seemed like coming into this game, like you had a will, like you were not going to let your team lose this game and, and just kind of talk about your mindset. <laughs> um, You know, I think it's by any means necessary. You can't give game one back. But in the moment, you can't get a game two back either. Like you have to, every possession counts. And so if that ends up being a jump ball, that means they don't get it in the paint and they have to reset. If that means that I had to do a take foul, they have to reset. Um, so it's about each possession, like what's your smartest move, what's going to um, put you in the best position possible defensively. Um, and some, and a lot of those were, was me coming on the backside, getting steals or getting deflections and allowing us to reset our defense, get our matchups, um, so they're not in the paint. Nick, Hamilton. Good, good evening, ladies. Congratulations on the win. Uh, Asia, you and Stewie obviously went back and forth like two heavyweight fight, fighters going, going at it. Um, when you look at that matchup between you two, obviously I know it's a team game, but everybody's kind of focused on you two, obviously, for various reasons. Do you feel like this is something that the league needs to continue on as far as having that those type of matchups and be able to intrigue more fans and more people involved with the game and involved with the W? For sure. I mean, I think that's what grows the game. Everyone loves a good matchup. Everyone loves to be like, oh, what's going to happen here? I think that's what draws fans. That's what draws attention to us. Um, it's kind of hard also being in that spotlight, spotlight, of course, because all eyes are on Stewie and I. But at the end of the day, like, it's something that's going to grow our game. When you look at NBA, when you look at football, anything, there's always a good matchup that everyone's tuned into no matter what. So it's good that we are finally starting to grow something like that uh, to where people can tune in and be like, hey, I might not watch one WNBA game, but the AC Seattle matchup is something that you got to catch. So I'm glad that we are even in that conversation because uh, we, we've come a very long way. Adrian Hernandez with Odyssey Sports. For you to win you, can you guys talk about coming off the bench, the energy level of Carla Williams the past two games? Energy, she missed a couple shots. She didn't waver. She was making sure she found the body and just hustling throughout the game and getting rebounds. She was huge. She had eight rebounds. Now, she'll say that she about 5'9", but she about 5'6". <laughs> um, but it was like our heart and determination. She was at the right spot at the right time defensively. And a lot of those things, even still, you mentioned her, but a lot of things that it still goes unnoticed, but we understand what she's doing. And Becky understands it why that's why she was kept in the game. Um, and then when I when you talked when they talked about our space, our pick and roll coverage, like it's gonna be different with Raquana in the in there in the corner. You can't leave her. I don't care if she's missed six, you can't leave her. And so when you talk about that, like it's good to have those players around you. So she was the spacer for us. She was able to penetrate the lane. She got tap outs defensively. She was on point on target. And so it's the little things that separates like these plays and coming out with a win that won't be on the stat sheet. Do you want Mike? Yeah, um, Chelsea, you know, you've played with and against some of the very best post players ever in women's basketball. When you see a matchup like tonight with, with Asia and Stewie, I know you're in the middle of the game, but just if you can step away as a fan, what it's like to watch um, these two women, especially they're in their 20s and they're fine, like going at it. 
Shoot, I'd be watching during the game. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, Stewie just scored. Asia, what you about to do? <laughs> Asia, what you, I watched Stewie going for the slip. Like it, like she said, it's like growing the game. Like you you talk about those matchups all, all the time. Um, you see it on the NBA side, like when young and Kobe was, was trying to play against MJ, like those type of matchups, like a lot of attention is on it. And it's a lot that you that these players have to, you know, they're going through, like with all that pressure. Um to be in that spotlight um but it's good for the fans it's good for you know our sport and it's good for them like it raises their level of awareness for each other like it raises their level of play um they get better by challenging each other even if they're not mashed up all the time they know like we're they're both competitors and so they're getting better each time out there on the court and we're getting better of how to combat that as people that surround them um so I'll be watching it too, Michael, honestly. <laughs> hey, so Becky mentioned going to the smaller lineup to free up some space, get you involved more. But the third quarter, when, when that occurred, you just kind of became possessed. I think it was six of eight shooting, 13 points of the teams. Can you just talk about the third quarter? What sort of your mindset? Because it seemed like you were on a mission, like it's time for me to take this game over. Yeah, I mean, I did uh, what I need to do in game one. Uh, like Chelsea said, we can't get game one back, but I didn't like that feeling that I had. Um, I needed to be more present, more in the moment for my team, and I wasn't. So I wasn't going to let, when I saw the game getting down to the wire, I was like, well, we're not about to let this happen again. I learned my lesson. Uh, so I don't necessarily know if it's possessed, but uh, I just really was locked in for my team. I, need, I needed to be that anchor that I was before um, and being consistent in, in, into what got us here. So I just really locked in. I don't, I don't even remember the third quarter. Uh, because I was just that locked in because I need to be that for my team. Spencer, without a line, uh, going into the end of the first quarter, things seemed a little bit off. So this is a question for either one of you, I guess. Uh, there was a few unforced, unforced turnovers, you know, a few missed free throws, and then the team attitude seemed to change from the second quarter onwards. What do you think was the biggest change? Um, uh, yeah, I have to replay it. I'm going to have to take a second and replay it on my head when I get home. <laughs> But what I could probably tell you is that we lost the first quarter in game one. And so how do we, we didn't like that feeling. And so second quarter, we need to be better. Third quarter, we need to be better. Each possession, each quarter matters. And so um, it's probably like, you know, when you remember something puts a bad taste in your mouth and we lost game, the, uh, game one and we lost first quarter. Then after that, it was different. Um, so that's probably what you're referring to. I would just have to watch it back or just replay it in my head later. Last question. Hey, um, Asia, well, both of you, I can join this on. You coach talked about trust in the team as a team and the acronym on it. You can remember. But Chelsea, for you, in terms of so having someone in your back, what does it do for you to be so aggressive and disruptive when you know she's got your back on the offensive end? And then kind of flip the script. What does it do for you, right? Knowing that you've got somebody who's just playing like that. I think those habits and having that trust are not. It's not built in the playoffs. It's built like in training camp. It's built before we even come to training camp, and it's having a conversation of um, of what we want for the next season, um, what we want out of each other, pulling that out of each other, and. Um, these habits that you're seeing through the game, like it's not happening during playoffs. Like you put people in different positions. You put, there's different plays. Like everybody knows your plays. You make little tweaks, but this, the history behind it is like what you're, you're ready for playoffs. It's like what you have built up. You're building up this trust within each other. And that starts early. That starts with communication before you even step on the floor. And I think that's what you're seeing now in the playoffs. It's like, okay, let's have a conversation. Like I would, tell her different things that I saw on film. And she's like, okay, I trust that. She had a slip out when I told her that. It was like those moments of trusting each other were built long before we even came in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, it's just honestly the same uh, same answer. And at the end of the day, it's kind of one of those things like I got your six, like knowing that I don't have to worry about so much because I know I got somebody behind my back. So if I ain't got to worry about that, now I can lock in. And I think that's just a matter of just the team sport in general. But it's very hard that you come by teammates that – you can hold them accountable and they don't take it personal. Uh, it's playoffs. We all want to win. I, I don't want to cuss you out, but if I have to cuss you out, I will. 
And it's just one of those situations like, okay, come for a quarter. Thanks for cussing me out. Like little things like that. Just it, it's it's understanding not to take anything personal because we, we've we been in places that we didn't feel good and we're like, let's work our way out of it. And like Chelsea said, it all starts with communication and, and having that conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, ladies. We'll let you go and see you in Seattle for games three and four. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>